It's a rough life for the insect monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh. They don't have the best track record of cards that impact the meta and haven't received a lot of solid archetypes. For a game that revolves around magical creatures, Egyptian gods, and even cybernetic machines, insects seem to have gotten the IRL treatment as weak bugs that you can hit with a fly swatter. So to honor our multi-legged friends who made people scream when they move, we made a list of the best insect monsters in the game. A list so good that it makes Weevil proud and hopefully you as well. To start this list off, we have number 35, Ravenous Tarantula. This rank 10 XCs cracks the list with unique effects that give all monsters you control an attack and defense boost equal to the difference between both players' life points. On top of that effect, it burns your opponent for 600 every time they special summon a monster. If that wasn't enough, this card could detach materials from itself to pop all your opponent's monsters who had less attack than it. All three effects are perfectly layered into one another, making this card versatile for early and late games. The effect of gaining stats doesn't matter whether you or your opponent is in the lead. So regardless of whether your opponent has a higher life point total or is hanging on by a measly 3,000 life points while you have 8,000, all your monsters will gain that 5,000, making a sneakily good OTK. To make it even more dangerous, it was part of the extra deck package with number 84 Pain Gainer and number 77 7 Sins. Pain Gainer could be XC summoned using Ravenous Tarantula, since Pain Gainer could use rank 8, 9, or 10 Dark XCs with two or more materials for its summon. You can then XC summon it into the Seven Sins, who's a 4000 attack beat stick on summon that can detach two materials to banish all of your opponent's special summon monsters, and attach one of those banished monsters to it as material on the next turn when its effect can be activated, and can protect itself from being destroyed as you could detach one of its materials from it instead. Regardless, none of this would come to fruition if not for Ravenous Tarantula. It doesn't take away from Ravenous being a great rank 10 insect then going to Pain Gainer and then Deadly Sins, or be able to stand alone by itself, as some argue that its effects make it, in some cases, better than the later options. And at number 9, we have Diablo Lantis, the Menacing Mantis. This generic level 8 synchro can send any plant or insect monster from your deck to the graveyard, equal to the number of non-tuner materials used for its synchro summon on its summon. And if you control this synchro summoned monster, you can target an insect or plant you control and treat it as a tuner until the end of the turn. The whole TCG was put on notice when this card became an exclusive foolish burial for plants and insects. Diablo Lantis was seen as a combo starter out of the gate, with card milling effects being predominantly significant for combos. The part that caught everyone off guard was what deck could abuse Diablo Lantis. Though many saw it as a staple for insect R-types like Bee Troopers and various insect piles, it was Punk Therion that put the card to good use. Punk had no problem making Diablo Lantis as part of their mainline combo, and with its effect, it was able to send Therion Lily Boria, a plant-type monster who was a crucial part of the Punk Therion combo line to the graveyard. Diablo Lantis was a level 8, meaning it and Foxy Tune could be used for a gigantic champion Sargass, and even its second effect proved to be beneficial, as it could make itself a tuner to go into synchro plays, making high-level synchros like Psychic and Punisher or Crimson Dragon. The TCG should be all wiping their heads that this card isn't running rampant in the meta. Though it's a generic level 8, this card is just niche enough that every deck can't or don't want to run it. In most cases, cards that incorporate milling usually don't have a long shelf life in the format without being hit in any capacity. Like Chaos Ruler, which ironically enough, was the go-to milling tool that Punk used to use before it was banned, making players replace it with Diablo Lantis. What makes it even more stunning is that even though it was a mill for plants and insects, most of these insects and plant archetypes can't utilize Diablo Lantis' effect to the same strength as Punk Therion can. And at number 8, we have Gardarla, the Mystery Dust Kaiju. Gardarla is a level 8 wind insect with 2700 attack. You can special summon from your hand to your opponent's side of the field in attack position by tributing one monster they control. If your opponent controls a kaiju monster, you can special summon this monster to your side of the field. Its quick effect allows you to remove three kaiju counters on the field to have the attack and defense of all other monsters on the field. You can essentially ignore this last effect on the card because it was rarely used. Kaijus are known as one of the best monster removal options in the game. Their special summon condition is technically not an effect, so it doesn't target or start a chain, which helps get around monsters with high stats, problematic effects, or hard to remove monsters because of specific protections on them. This made Kaijus, seen as a failed TCG deck, into a fantastic tech option for going second and helpful for breaking boards in general. So if all kaijus had this same special summoning conditions, what makes Gardarla special? Well, all you have to do is peek into the late 2010s and early 2020 format where Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds ran wild. This simple 1000 attack monster was a staple in almost every wind-based deck, due to the effect that prevents players from special summoning any monsters except wind monsters, locking out a majority of options for you to play, since special summoning is nearly a critical factor in every part of the game. 
With this card in the field, it locked your opponent into only being able to special summon the weakest attributes in Yu-Gi-Oh! As Wind was one of the most underutilized attributes at the time. Decks like Bird Up and Flunder Reeves were able to utilize this menace, as Bird Up was able to make some more to special summon Barrier during the end phase, and Flunder Reeves could normal summon Barrier during either player's turn, as the deck provided extra normal summons with cards like Dreaming Town, and ways to easily search it out as part of their normal combos. Enter Godarla to save the day. This kaiju was the only way for some decks to out the barrier statue consistently because it's the only wind kaiju monster. No other kaiju could be used since barrier stops attempts at special summoning non-wind monsters, even if the card concerns removing it from the field first. So no Gamasil or Dogaron could dig you out. Even interrupted kaiju slumber would need two wind kaijus if it were to be used. So Gardala earns a spot being an unsung hero who came in clutch until Barrier was rightly cast into the depths of the Forbidden List. And flying into number 7, we have Bee Trooper Armorhorn. This Link to Insect lets you normal summon one insect on its effect resolving during your main phase. It can also be special summoned from your graveyard once per turn by banishing three other insect monsters from your grave. So right off the bat, Armorhorn was laughably amazing, taking just two insect materials to make and then supplying you with an additional summon an ability that has put other cards in hot water like Nightmare Goblin, who's currently banned due to one of the reasons being is it gives an additional normal summon. Insects usually don't have any problem swarming the field, having cards like Doomdozer and Pin the Bullseye, which take little effort required to summon, giving the Insect R-Type another card that lets him continue summoning for free with one of the most valuable summon mechanics and normal summoning is an overkill. On top of all of this, this card can be brought back from the graveyard by banishing three other insects. Since insects can quickly fill the graveyard with resources, you can guarantee that during your next turn, you can bring this card back to the field with its normal summoning effect once again live, and have a body that can be used for combos, including link climbing into other links. The only saving grace that keeps this menace at bay and off the ban list is that you can only special summon insect type monsters while this card is face up on the field and that it can only normal summon insects with its effect. That one guarantees we don't have another Nightmare Goblin, but a balanced tool that insect-related decks can use. And at number 6, we have Gogipole. If you're a true student in the way of the insect, then you already know that Gogipole is a must-have in almost every insect deck build. The card is always a free search, and its effect to search just needs to be sent to the graveyard in any way in order to add any level 4 insect monster from your deck to your hand. If you add a normal monster, however, you get to special summon monster and then pop a monster of the field whose attack is greater than or equal to the monster you summoned. Not only was this monster a great searcher, but its effect could gain you an extra body on the board and become removal all in one card, making it a tremendous second turn option. This made running a low level insect, garnet, or siding one an absolute must in every deck that ran Gogipole. If you watched our top 10 normal monsters support video, this card was used in conjunction with Killer Nido the most due to its low attack stat and the fact that it could get past pesky floodgate monsters like the aforementioned Bear Statue of the Stormwinds. It even saw play in highly competitive meta decks, the most surprising being Tier Limits, who could easily gain Gogipole's effect off of their milling and use Gogipole to get a Danger Mothman in their hand who could trigger the Tealement card with the effect, whether it be a Tealement monster being discarded from your hand because of Mothman's attempted special summoning, or could be discarded via Mothman's effect of making both players draw a card and then discard one, in which case you'd be discarding a Tealement or even an Ishizu monster. Either way, this situation was a win-win because our sixth best insect monster was incorporated. And at number five, we have the core insect staple, Resonance Insect. This level 4 earth insect searches for a level 5 or higher insect monster from your deck when it's sent from the field to the graveyard. It can also send any insect monster from your deck to the graveyard if it's banished. Now, many might think Resonance is too high on this list when cards like Diablo Lantis, Armorhorn, or even Gokipole probably do more for insects with their effects at mill, give extra summons, or even pop monsters. Though those are solid arguments, what makes Resonant Insect the best gift is that unlike all these other cards, its effect isn't once per turn. As long as you meet its requirements, you can use multiple copies of it and its effects numerous times. With how fast the game is, it's rare to find decks with cards that aren't slapped with hard once per turn clauses, and it's even rarer to see them with soft once per turn clauses. Non once per turn cards, especially searchers, can skyrocket a deck's consistency to the moon and make it harder for your opponent to slow down without any response. That's why cards like Sangian, Witch of the Black Forest, and Reinforcements of the Army have seen a place on the Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Limited list, as they were non-once-per-turn cards that could be activated multiple times to fetch essential pieces to your strategy. 
For a card like Resonance Insect to be unlimited the TCG shows how underwhelming it is to play insects. As if it wasn't already good enough as is, the card just needs to be on the field and sent to the graveyard to search for a level 5 or higher insect, regardless of where it is on the field. If this card was in the spell and trap card zone due to the effects of a card like Insector Pico Flena and then removed from the field, it would still get you a search since it doesn't say it needs to be in the monster zone and guarantees that you'll be searching a scary moth or a sting lancer. The same goes for its banishment effect, which doesn't discriminate where or when it does happen and guarantees an insect is sent to the graveyard from your deck. These reasons alone are why Resident Insect is always assumed to be at least a one-off in every single insect strategy. Up next, number four, we have Insector Dragonfly. This level three insect monster allows you to equip an insector monster from your hand or graveyard to it. If a card equipped to this is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon an insector monster from your deck. Also, if this card is equipped to a monster, that monster gains 1000 attack and increases its level by three. Dragonfly is one of the main reasons why insectors were a tier one deck back in the 2012 meta. Not only was the equip effect a soft once per turn, but its second effect wasn't once per turn at all. As long as the equip cards were being removed from it, you gained a free Insector from your deck. Dragonfly was the primary combo starter, and through just one Dragonfly, Insector Hornet, and Insector Sword, Insect Caliber, you could spam the board with enough monsters to make rank 3s and 6s. You see, when Hornet is equipped to a monster, you can send it to the graveyard to pop any card on the field. Players would equip it to Dragonfly, as when Hornet gets sent to the graveyard, Dragonfly would trigger and get you a free special summon in the form of Centipede. At the same time, Hornet would either pop one of your opponent's cards for board removal, or pop a card on your side of the field, like Zectalibur, triggering Zectalibur and grabbing you back an insect monster from your graveyard. Combos like this led to Dragonfly and Hornet getting hit in 2012 and being put on the limited list to slow down the Insector's consistency and ability to build a board and deplete their opponent's board simultaneously. The hilarious fact was that the deck was still somehow playable, even though both cards got put to one copy, and still produced FTKs and OTKs until the power creep finally took its toll on the deck. Dragonfly then finally went back to 2 during the July 2019 format and was given its release papers on October of 2019 where the deck is relatively more tamer than it was in 2012. And buzzing into number 3 in this list is Naturia Mole Cricket. If there are two monsters responsible for Naturia being a playable archetype outside of Bamboo Lockdown, Naturia Camilla and Mole Cricket would be the MVPs. Naturia Mole Cricket is a level 1 earth insect that you can tribute during either player's main phase to special summon one Naturia monster from your deck. However, you can special summon two instead if your opponent controls the monster with the highest attack on the field. Also, if this card is in your graveyard and your opponent special summons a monster from the extra deck, or if you special summon a Naturia monster from your extra deck, you can special summon this card from your graveyard back to the field. Mole Cricket was everything Naturia needed in a monster floating out free resources from the deck and having amazing recursion whenever a monster is special summoned from the extra deck. This card is even more dangerous because its recruiting effect is a quick effect that players could use as an interruption on your opponent's turn. A majority of nature of monsters have effects that interact with your opponent's turn. With Cricket, you could now put those monsters on field to sub interruptions on your opponent's turn, like Naturia Sunflower, who can negate a monster effect and destroy it by treating itself on another Naturia monster, and Naturia Horn Needle, who could tribute another Naturia monster when your opponent spells summons a monster to destroy that monster. With these monsters' tribute costs being offset with Camilla's effect to send two cards on top of your deck to the graveyard instead of tributing Naturia's. The best part is that this engine can be incorporated into other decks that can use this package for interruption and establish better board presence such as Runic and Ragnarika. And at number two, we have Level Eater. Who would have thought that this 5D card would be one of the most degenerate extenders of all time? This level one insect has a simple effect. If it's in your graveyard, you can permanently reduce the level of a level five or higher monster by one to special summon it from your graveyard. This card can't be used for a tribute except for a tribute summon, but that would be the least of the TCG's worries. By simply reducing a high level monster, you get an instant extender for use, which was insane for synchro plays in the mid and late 2010s, as there was a surge of high level tuners and even synchro tuners, which made it easier to synchro climb without needing to put out any other extra resources on the board. You could do this as often as possible since this effect wasn't a once per turn, and it only gets worse from here, as when links were introduced, this card was absolutely abused as a recurring source as long as you have a high level monster on the field. So to save the headache of Level Eater into Link Karibo, Konami banned Level Eater on February 2018. What went from a simple tool for synchros was now deemed too dangerous and probably will stay that way 
until it's eroded with the hard ones per turn. The game is at a point where having a card that can endlessly loop itself as a source can't be roaming around in the meta, and as long as Lynx and Seagulls remain options in the extra deck, this card would be incorporated non-stop into generate plays and loops. And finally, at number 1, standing alone on the top of the anthill is Maxi. From the best extended of the game, we now reveal the best hand trap to be printed. Maxi is a level 2 insect that lets you send it from your hand to the graveyard during either player's turn to immediately draw a card every time your opponent special summons until the end of the turn. Just hearing this effect alone already explains why this card is one of the most polarizing cards to be printed. It cannot be stressed enough how important it is to be able to special summon in today's game. The mechanic can be done from literally everywhere and is crucial in most cases to establish almost every end board created in Yu-Gi-Oh! Maxi ensures that you can capitalize on your opponent's plays by netting new cards every time they do it. And in today's game, where we're using Action Deck now more than ever, you're guaranteed that you'll go plus every time you use Maxi. This becomes a dangerous game for your opponent, because they're openly giving you resources in exchange for establishing a board, subsequently making it a game of chicken. Do you risk extending in return to giving your opponent 20 cards while making your board? Or do you end your turn to provide them with nothing and hope they don't have the resources to end the duel? This reason alone is why this card has been banned since February 2018. The card is always guaranteed to see play, unlike other hand traps who are sometimes psyched out based on how well they can affect whatever current meta is being played. Maxi will never have that issue, as special summoning will always be used in today's game, and be a crucial part for decks that rely on combos and extension. Maxi proves its mettle as the big bug on campus. And with that, our top 10 list of best insects is complete. Now you know more than just Doomdozer. Do you think there was an insect that deserved to be on this list? Let us know down in the comments, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Top 10s and Yu-Gi-Oh! content.